Valentine's Day is quickly approaching, which often means that we are looking for ways to show a little extra love to those we care about. We often focus on showing that love to our family and our friends, our coworkers, and even through Valentine's we get for our kiddos to give to their teachers. But regardless of if you're single, married, or in a relationship, we can often overlook showing a little love to ourselves. So today we are going to explore a little more about this thing called self-love as it truly is a concept, a lifelong process. We have a special guest with us today to help navigate how to self-love. Jaina Marie has lived a very unconventional life. Despite being sexually abused as a child, moving to Mexico alone at age 19, being held hostage on her wedding day, recovering from two divorces, experiencing the loss of a child, and being the center of a scandal that went viral. She's managed to grow a six-figure bridal beauty business and has been flown all around the world, not just for her skills, but as a personality figure too. Jaina is a renowned makeup artist who has gained notable recognition in the wedding industry and has also worked with celebrities such as Lady Gaga and Serena Williams. Jaina's motto is do it for the story. So her life is brimming with wild adventure. I love that. Welcome, Jaina. It's an honor to have you join us today. Thank you so much for having me. This is, this is truly a treat. I absolutely, I do love your show and what you've done. So thank you for having me as a guest. It's an honor. Thank you. Now, Gina, I am inspired by one of your goals of not only to help your clients love their look, but to love themselves. So help us, as you would say, breathe in some of that self-confidence and breathe out some of that self-doubt that far too many of us have when it comes to truly loving ourselves. And I think that starts at the foundation of why is loving ourselves so important? That's such a good question. Yeah, honestly, I get women in my makeup chair that immediately sit down and give me all their insecurities, right? And so I always feel like makeup is just the first step. It kind of just gives you this new, obviously this new confidence. It's not just an outward thing. It, it's an in, it's an inward change as well. So I'm always not only doing the makeup, but also hyping the person up in the chair. And I just feel like loving yourself is so important because we teach other people how to treat us. So the way we see ourselves determines the kind of love that we're going to accept from other people. Right. So for example, um, like if you see yourself as just like a broke down jalopy with too many kilometers and bad breaks, uh, you'll accept a low ball offer because you're just happy that there's an interested buyer. Does that make sense? Right. So, so if you saw yourself instead as a Lamborghini with custom paint and a limited edition leather interior, then you're never going to consider a low ball offer in terms of love. So, um, so yeah, it's just more of like knowing what you deserve for yourself. And that's going to, it's going to change everything around you. Um, and also, you know, from a biblical perspective, I fully believe that loving yourself is a form of worship because if you believe, and if you believe that you are part of God's creation, just like a waterfall, a beautiful sunset or maybe a shooting star, then you should stare at yourself in the same wonder like you do when you look at when you see his other works of art. Oh, absolutely. But how do we look past our imperfections and see what makes us us? Maybe we don't see that Lamborghini. We we see that scratch on the side <laughs> door of the Lamborghini. <laughs> right. Well, okay. So that's like such a that's such a valid question. So the first way that you look past your imperfections is by not seeing them as imperfections in the first place, because those are exactly the things that make you, you like, if I fully believe that God doesn't make mistakes, he didn't drop the paintbrush and go, oops, now she's got a dimple on her chin. You know what I mean? <laughs> he carefully painted and, and, you know, constructed every single part of you exactly the way it was supposed to be with all kinds of special lumps and bumps to make you unique. So I fully believe in celebrating the differences because they represent a part of your story. So for example, maybe you got your, you know, nose from your grandmother who was intelligent and courageous, or maybe you have a story behind your freckles or your curly hair. It's all the perfect blend that makes you a one of a kind limited edition work of art. That's kind of like my little, that's my little spiel on that. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you just nailed something and that is a part of what makes us us is our story. And we all are all cut from the different cloth, right? So what tips might you have in embracing our unique story? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I think part of embracing your unique story is being courageous and believing that it's going to end beautifully, no matter where you are in that place in the story. So sometimes we have a hard time accepting or embracing the story because we're not where we want to be in it right now. Right. It's easy to accept it when you're happy with where you are, but sometimes when you're not happy with where you are, 
it's just a matter of faith because I fully believe that we can either have faith or we have fear because you can't have both at the same time. If you're afraid of how your story is going to end, then you simply don't believe that God's got your back. It's as simple as that. So the truth is the story could end up way better than you ever imagined it. Right? So I, I feel like these days there's all these posts everywhere about like you design the life you want. You are the author of your own story and all this kind of stuff. But the truth is that we can only really make creative suggestions. The final cut is not really up to us. So we can say, you know, I'd really like my story to end up like this, but I feel like lots of times God's like, that's what you think, but his imagination is so much better than what we could have for ourselves. So for example, when I decided that I wanted to do makeup and um, I remember I went to go to makeup school and the manager of the school um, said, what do you want to do with your career? And I was like, I don't know. I think, I think my dream is to work at a Mac counter. Right. And I was thinking like, that would be, that would be it for me. And she was like, well, then you're in luck. We have 17 Mac counters in Vancouver. Cause I was moving cities in order to do makeup. I never once worked at a Mac counter, but when you think of all the other things that I did, it's like, ah, it's fine. I never expected I'd be you know, flown around the world, working with celebrities or being booked years in advance. So God's imagination for my life was so much better than what I had envisioned. So absolutely. He is the author of a story. I love that. And, and, and as you said, he, he does much better at writing the story than we can do ourselves. <laughs> so yeah. So right now, sometimes we can get in those pits of just wondering what we have to offer. So finding our value, it's not so much the imperfections, but we can focus so much on being too fluffy or losing our youth or getting into the comparison trap. Oh, that happens way too often. Right. Or just overall <laughs> signs of aging from those stretch marks of giving birth or those crow lines on our face. So what advice might you give to the one listening who struggles with her or even his body? Anyone who's struggling with loving their body, I, I, I always just say like, can you please, please take a second to apologize to yourself? Because when you focus on those small things that you've decided are flaws, those are things that usually other people probably won't even notice, right? You're completely overlooking all of the ways in which your body is showing up for you every single day. You know, it's like, can you walk? Can you think? Can you remember? Can you dance? Because a dear friend of mine, um, she actually just got a viral infection. She woke up one morning with Bell's palsy. So this just happened a few weeks ago. So suddenly half of her face is frozen. It's not only frozen, it almost looks like it's kind of like, dripping off her face kind of because all the muscles are kind of like paralyzed or whatever but the world doesn't stop because she's got this problem so now she's still got to go to work she's also a makeup artist she's got to go to work she's in people's face everybody's seeing her and she's feeling terrible about the way she looks and she told me I never thought to be thankful of the ability to smile you know like just the simple just the ability to smile to have that that connection with other people she's like and now I have Bell's palsy all I want is to be able to smile again and I just kind of feel like, can you smile today? I can smile today. You know, like it looks beautiful on you, right? And so in those moments when we're hyper-focusing, we're zooming in on these little things, we're completely neglecting the big picture, which is all the other ways in which our body is doing so much for us. On top of, we, our lives go in phases. I believe, you know, we're sometimes looking your very best, being your skinniest, doing all the, you know, being your most fit is not, conducive to where you are in that moment in your life, because maybe other things need to be bigger priorities, like healing your heart or building your career or, and it's okay, but that season will come later when those other things have fallen apart and you can get fallen together. Sorry. And you can get refocused again on yourself, but it's okay to understand that everything is coming and changing with its own timing. And certain things can only be a focus at a certain time. You can't, it's, it's almost impossible to be everything all at once, you know? So um, yeah, respect, you know, just respect what your body is doing for yourself because yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to miss out on an opportunity to be grateful. So true. So true. And you don't want to sell on even going on that vacation, taking that picture just because your thighs were a little bit thicker in the bathing suit that year. Right. You, you still yeah, want to experience but, some of those yeah. things and live life or as you would say, do it for the story. <laughs> exactly. And the thing is like, I know women who women, especially who will stop themselves for, they're like, well, I want to do a photo shoot, but I need to lose 10 pounds first. I want to go on that vacation, but I don't want anyone to see me in a bathing suit. You're really literally putting the beautiful moments in your life on pause for something that nobody else notices. You know, I had a woman, she told me I'm about to go on vacation and I'm really nervous because I have, um, you know, like a little pooch from having my baby. 
And I said, I've lost two pregnancies. I would absolutely love to have a pooch from having a baby. So just consider that that little bit of flabby skin is a beautiful blessing that you have this little tiny human now, you know? And so rock that little tummy, rock those stretch marks because they represent something so, so, so beautiful and something so powerful that you've created life. And you're going to sit here and worry about what someone else who's not even relevant in your life thinks about the way you look in a bathing suit. They're not even thinking about you. They're wondering where the next margarita is going to come from, you know? (laughs) Well said. That can be so convicting to us too, is just to take that, that approach of, of really gratitude and, and the blessings that we have instead of the criticism that we often give ourselves. Right now, what about mm-hmm. those times when others don't like us? <laughs> oh yeah. It's hard, especially when you're a people pleaser and you feel like you're the kind of person who's doing everything like with the anticipation that everybody's going to love you. I get it. You know, since, uh, I've released my own podcast as well. And when you do that, you're just like, please like it. And you just want people, you just want people to like what you're creating and like who you are. You know, it's, it's so tricky, but it's something we absolutely cannot control. And it would be exhausting to try and control everybody's opinions of us. It's absolutely impossible. And we just simply cannot be everyone's favorite flavor. You know, my sister always says to me, she told me this one time when I went on a date and I was all brokenhearted that this, this guy wasn't into me. And she said, you could be the juiciest peach on the tree and still, still there's somebody who doesn't like peaches. Right. You know, (laughs) imagine that. Right. And even, I even, I remember I met a woman one time who told me that she hated tacos. Like, I'm sorry, what? I think tacos are the world's most perfect food you know she's so doomed for taco tuesday <laughs> <laughs> i be, i think i really do think they're the world's most perfect food and the fact that someone doesn't like tacos you know so it's like i could be delicious i could be so inviting i could be all the things and somebody's like i'll pass on it and sometimes we're a little bit we are selfish in that we think everything's about us but a lot of times somebody else's opinion of us is because we're bringing up an insecurity in themselves. And I don't like to say like, just that, oh, they're jealous. That's, it's not that. It's for example, sometimes when you are a bold person standing in your truth, you know, unafraid of the spotlight or chasing after your goals, other people will see that sometimes and, and realize that they're not doing the same. Or they, you know, I, I notice that when I look at people where I'm like, oh, look at her. Like she keeps posting herself in her bikini. And I'm thinking, is that me having a little bit of jealousy because I haven't been able to go to the gym lately and I just ate a pizza last night, you know, so you always have to check yourself what the reason is that you are perhaps criticizing somebody else. You need to immediately look inwards and ask yourself, what does this say about where I'm at right now that that person doing that thing might be bothering me? Like why? Right. And such good reminder. And, and that we are to be each other's cheerleaders. Like go rock that swimsuit. If you can wear it well, I'll get there eventually. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> you enjoy your swimsuit. I'll enjoy my pizza. We can <laughs> there you all... go. It's a win-win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, why is it important to love ourselves now as we are? I mean, you mentioned the blessing of like the, the extra pudge of the tummy, but why is it so important to just accept us now? Because we're never going to be younger than we are right now. It's simple as that. Time is rushing past us. And before we know it, boom, another 10 years are going to have flown by. And we'll be wishing that we look like we do right now or that we had the energy that we have right now. You know, and like I experienced this recently when uh, my mom turned 50 and I decided to surprise her with a trip to Mexico. And she had no idea. She was so excited. But she had a little mini freak out moment once we got there because she was like, oh my goodness, I'm 50. It really hit her really hard. She just felt really old. And I said to her, mom, you're never going to be younger than you are right now. Like, this is a beautiful moment. Let's just, let's just, let's just live it up. Right. Then it was almost like we blinked. And this last May, she turned 60 and like a whole decade went by and, and you know, all the Facebook memories start coming up and we go, that was 10 years. It was 10 years. And it didn't feel like, you know, it felt like yesterday. And all I kept thinking was, I'm going to blink and she's going to be 70, you know, and like 70 is a totally different, you know, it's just such a different situation when you're, when you're thinking about your parent. Right. And for me, I'm about to turn 40 and in a couple months. And I'm just like, man, I got to go so big for my birthday because I'm going to blink and I'm 50. Like, 
And I realize 50 is like the new 40 or whatever, but in your, in your mind, when you're not even 40 yet, 50 feels very old. So I'm like, what am I going to have a shuffleboard tournament for my 50? <laughs> like, no, I got to go big for 40, big, big, big. <laughs> I love that. that. That's hilarious. I, I know I'm, I'm there. I'm 42. And actually I was just looking at the calendar day and just kind of planning out things. And I was like, wait a second, I'm about to turn 43. And I kind of was confused by my own age for there a little bit. Yeah, right. It does. Even when you're living it, it can just blink so fast. Now, uh, in all of that, what are some things that we consider or process to be able to fully love ourselves even while that work in progress? Yeah. So I, first of all, I feel like if you're putting in the work in order to be a work in progress, that's beautiful in itself. You're putting the work in, you carry with you an infinite amount of potential and your value comes from so many places. Not just if you can still fit into your prom dress, you know what I mean? If your hair is the length you want it to be, or if you can, if you can't seem to find the time to eat, right. You're still funny, intelligent. You have a big heart. You love on the people around you. You have an interesting life story. You're talented. The list goes on and on and on and on. So I feel like if you just embrace all those things that are you and know that you are relevant and beautiful and accepted and fabulous for all so many other reasons, besides the fact that there's one thing that you might be working on, then that's really, uh, that, you know, that's the blessing right there. And also I feel like we go through phases of glowing and growing. So if you're in a phase of growing, it's usually painful, right? It's hard. It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. So for example, when you go to the gym and you're lifting weights and you get all that sore, those sore muscles after it's because growth is going to be happening. Right. And then once you've done your growing, you can have that moment of going like right now I'm in a glow phase of my life. I've been through a lot of trash, like a lot of horrible stuff. And those were that, those were the growing moments. Right. And now I'm finally having a glow up. So you have to always know that whatever phase you're in, if things are hard for you, it's temporary, right? If you're in the middle, if you're in the process of working towards something, that is the growing phase, but the glow up is on its way. <laughs> right. So true. Oh, such great advice. Now, Gina, here on Holly's Highlights podcast, we have a signature question. If you could go back and encourage, inspire, or equip yourself as a child, what would you tell your young self? I thought about this one for a long time. Cause I was just like, what? There's so many things, <laughs> right? There's so many things I would tell little baby Jaina for sure. Yeah. Um, so I would probably the, probably the most important out of everything is I would say no matter where you are right now, no matter how hard or how scary it might seem, it's exactly where you're supposed to be. Like, it doesn't matter how horrible it might feel in that moment there's a reason and you are being spared of something. And I, you never realize that when you're in the moment, because sometimes things can feel so horrible. And like, probably the very best example that I ever have is there was a moment in my life, probably my lowest of low, my, my condo had just flooded. Uh, the man that I thought who was the love of my life broke up with me only a few hours after I just lost our baby. So I had lost my baby, lost the love of my life. My condo was in shambles. I felt like I was down to nothing. And I remember looking at God and saying like, what did I do to deserve this? Like, why did I have to lose everything right now? What did, all I was doing was loving. Like, I do not understand. And you know, that footprints poem of like, why did you leave me on my own? You know, whatever, you know? And he said, that's the time when I was carrying you. I didn't know in that moment that the man that I was in love with had been living with another woman, our entire relationship in Chicago. Cause we had a long distance relationship. I had no idea that he had a whole other family. So from my little tiny perspective, I thought it was the worst thing ever, but I was being spared because you know how they say like, you don't, God hears the conversations that you don't hear when you're not in the room. Like I was being spared and I had no idea. And there's been so many things in my life that I never realized I was being spared until you know, a certain, you know, enough time had passed. And now I just know no matter how crappy the situation is, I'm like, well, I don't know what the reason is for this, but if I don't find out tomorrow, I'll find out five, 10, seven years from now, I will find out, but there is a reason. So again, no matter where you are right now, no matter how hard or scary it might seem, it's exactly where you're supposed to be. I love that. And, and so true. My dad always told us a quote of it's not 
how can I get out of this? It's what can I get out of this? What can we learn in the process of it? And, and so true. And I'm so thankful that God doesn't give us the bigger picture because I think you and I can relay on a lot of of different hardships, although they looked different of of Uh course, but just that I'm so thankful we didn't see the bigger picture because I don't know about you, but I would have been like "Mm -mm, too much wave my white flag. I am not going through all that. (laughs) Right. But also, also you would have never learned faith. Right. Right. If you oh. had the bigger picture, you would have never had to learn that you have to look up. You know, Absolutely. I remember when I was, when I was a little girl, um, my grandpa, my grandpa and I were really close and he had a pool in his house and, uh, I wanted to go for a swim. And he was like, you need your floaties on like my little, you know, your little water. Right. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't want those on. I didn't think they looked cool. I didn't think they looked, you know, and, and he goes, okay, well, if you don't think you need floaties, then let's go. And he took me and he dropped me into the pool. And I went sinking down into the water and I still remember looking up and seeing him as the water went over my face and I just went sinking right down to the bottom. And as I started to panic, he just grabbed me and scooped me up. And he was like, now do you want to wear your water wings? And sometimes I think that that's what God does. He drops us in the water so that our only option that we have is to look up, you know, and to realize like, maybe I do need you. Maybe I do need the help. Maybe I do. Maybe I do need my water. Wings, <laughs> right. And so those moments that, I, that I've had in my life, those were all the moments that had me looking up. So mm-hmm. that faith acronym of forsaking all, I trust him. Got to go through a lot yeah. of stuff to be able to truly trust him for sure. Facts. <laughs> now, Jana, after seeing your portfolio, I thought, man, I wish she was a local to where I could have you do my hair and makeup for my book cover photo shoot. You <laughs> are beyond talented, my friend. And I'm sure after (laughs) learning from you today, others will be wondering a similar thing of how they can connect with you further. So where can our listeners reach out to you either to hear more about you, such as on your podcast, or even just to check out your services? Well, I have been booked with clients all over the world. So working together wouldn't be impossible. Just so you know, fabulous. (laughs) I love it. It would be an honor to be a part of your book. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) <laughs> but where could you find me? I mean, well, there's my website, which is hellojana.com. It's hello, J A Y N A.com. I'm also, of course, on Instagram, which is Jana Marie Makeup, J A Y N A M A R I E Makeup. And most importantly, of course, I have my podcast, which is called Big Lash Energy, and it can be found on all platforms. I would absolutely love to see some of your listeners there. Awesome. And congratulations on just starting that this year too. That's a huge undertaking for you and you are killing it, my friend. So well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Now, Gina, thank you again for your time and your encouragement. And I I just admire how you seek to lift other women up and build this tribe, this community of women who walk confidently in who they are. So thank you again so much for being here this morning. It's all my pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's um, just a lovely way to start my day. Now I'm just going to hop along, just feeling like I had a little bit of holy love in my life. So thank you. Fabulous. <laughs> now, if you want to hear more or some related episodes of this for this season of love, they can be found on Holly's Highlight season two, episode three, where we talk all things Valentine's Day and relationships with focus on the family. And then season three, episode three, where we discuss the languages of love and even look at discovering our own love language as well as why it's important to learn the love language of those in our lives. So overall, my friend, I can't stress enough that that healthy self-love and how it begins with an accurate view of who you are. And that's Psalms 139. You can look at that. It leaves no doubt that we are special. So as we get ready for this season of love, may we be reminded of what Psalms 139, 14 tells us that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And as a result, show ourselves a little more self-love as we strive to truly live loved. Happy Valentine's Day.